Welcome to Lecture 20 of Biology 116 entitled Nervous System Organization. In the previous two lectures, we've started looking at the nervous system. And basically, in those two lectures, we focused mainly on the functions associated with the nervous system. This final lecture on the nervous system is all about the structure. And the structure is going to be, of course, intimately related to the function of the nervous system and how it works. So it's important to recognize the organizational landscape associated with the nervous system, and that's what we're going to be doing in this lecture. We're going to begin in this first flowchart by looking at different types of nervous systems and the structures associated with different organisms. So we'll entitle this first flowchart NS, which stands for nervous system, types, and this will be the first part of this, so Roman numeral one. Take a look at figure 49.2 as we're going through this to get a visual representation of the different types of nervous systems we'll cover. We're going to begin by looking at a very simple organism, and a very simple, I should say, phyla of organisms, and that would be cnidarians. So cnidarians are very simple animals. They are still animals, but they're very simple animals. Um, a good example of a cnidarian would be like a hydra. So we've seen hydra before, we looked at their skeleton before, very simple organisms overall. And for that reason, cnidarians, because they're such simple organisms, they will have simple nervous systems. In fact, they are the simplest animals with a nervous system of any sort. So they do have an organizational nervous structure, but they're the simplest animals to have that. Why is that? Well, that's because they have no uh, central control organ within this nervous system, so no central control organ. Another way to say that fancy term is just to state that they have no brain. So the brain is a central control organ, and they don't have one. So again, this is a very simple organism. What do they have then that classifies as a nervous system? What they have is something called a nerve net. So we'll write that down. They do have a nerve net, and these are all cnidarians. Specifically, we're talking about hydra for right now. Now, a nerve net is simply going to be stated as an interconnected sort of uh, bundle of nerve cells. So we'll write that down. It's a many different interconnected nerve cells. And these nerve cells, uh, as they're connected to each other, are basically going to be able to send impulses to each other. So impulses in this system will be conducted and conducted, if you remember, when we're talking about nervous system terminology, just means impulses are moved. Messages are moved and pushed to the correct associated regions. And these impulses will actually be conducted in both the directions, meaning that it will go to the top of the organism or the bottom of the organism, I should say anterior or posterior. They can basically go up and down, where we saw in our first sort of functional look at the nervous system, we saw that it only goes in one direction, and that's down the axon. Here we can go in both directions when we want to move information. And because of that, information will then be spread throughout the body. Whatever nervous information needs to be sent will be spread throughout the body with this mechanism. So it's a very simple mechanism, um, and that's why we consider cnidarians the simplest animals with a nervous system. So let's get a little bit more complex. Let's continue looking at animals, but now I'm going to look at a different class, phyla of animals, and that would be sea stars. And if you remember, sea stars are also just going to be considered echinoderms. So don't forget the actual terminology here. The echinoderms are sea stars. What do they have? Well, sea stars are made up of nerves. Okay, They are certainly made up of nerves. But with these nerves, what we notice is that they have axons. And these axons are, are going to be bundled together with multiple neurons. So if you remember the organization of a nerve, a nerve is just a bundle of different axons, right? And that represents many different neurons. The same thing is seen here, where the sea stars actually have several different nerves that are com combinations of axons wrapped together forming multiple sort of uh, nerve structures via this neuron uh, subunit. This neuron basic unit will give us this structure of a nerve. So they have a true nerve, essentially. They also have a central control organ, and that would actually not be the brain here, but that central control is actually via something called a nerve ring. So because they have this axon structure, they can utilize it to have some sort of central control via a nerve ring. But in addition to the central control, they also have radial nerves. 
and these radial nerves allow for peripheral control. These are going to be things, uh, in, information is going to be received here, so we'll write that down. These radial nerves are going to receive info um, from this central control region, which is the nerve ring, NR for nerve ring. And then once those radial nerves receive that information, they're going to say, okay, let's take this information and send it to the appropriate region. So they basically send out this information to where it's supposed to go, and then you'll see an appropriate response. So I'll say send to appropriate muscles, because we know muscles are very much involved in responses to um, nervous impulses. So this is our C star, very simple still, but we have a little bit more organization, a little bit more complexity. Let's continue increasing complexity by looking now at bilateral organisms. So bilateral organisms are like you and I, and these are going to be organisms that have the plane of symmetry that gives them a bilateral symmetry. And these are, generally speaking, going to be more complex organisms for that reason. Now, let's look at two examples of bilateral organisms and see how we have increased complexity as compared to the non-bilateral. These are radiata organisms here. So let's look at the planarian. A planarian is an organism that falls under the phyla of platy helminthes. So let's just remind ourselves some animal diversity classification. So planarian. These will have the simplest central nervous system. So now they actually are dividing their nervous system not just into nerves or control regions. They actually have a central nervous system, a true one, and that will include a brain. This is going to be an anterior brain and also an eye spot. And that eye spot is going to be important because it's very good at detecting stimuli. And once it detects the stimuli, it will send it to the brain, and the brain will take whatever information has been detected and figure out what to do with it. Overall, the central nervous system on a planaria is going to be at its anterior end. It's going to be right at its sort of head region. And that's why we see this organization of a central nervous system at the front of most organisms, at the top. And that's what we see in planarians, even though they have the simplest. Now, in terms of their peripheral nervous system, um, they're going to have something sort of like a peripheral nervous system. And we'll explain what that means um, in humans a little bit later. But what they're going to have, uh, in addition to the central nervous system, is something called a ladder-type nervous system. Okay, And it's because their nervous system actually ends up looking very much like a ladder. They will. This will include two longitudinal. So this means they go up and down not left to right, but up and down. Two longitudinal nerve cords that go throughout their body. And they're going to have within them with traversing nerves. So basically, you get a ladder structure. So you're going to have this planarian, let's say, that will have two longitudinal nerve cords. And there will be nerves that traverse both sides. And what does that look like to you? That looks much like a ladder. And that's basically what we see here. Two, two longitudinal nerve cords here, and then the, in the middle of them, there will be these traversing nerves as well. Okay, And that covers our look at planarian. And then one more bilateral organism we'll look at, or group of organisms, would be the annelids. So we're getting even more complex now. And the arthropods. So these organisms will also have a nervous system. But now what we're actually going to be seeing is a complex brain. Okay, This is the first time we see a very much complex brain. And the reason why is because the brain will represent itself with what are known as ganglia. So that's a new term here. And this idea of being a complex brain due to ganglia is basically going to be s defined as the following. When we think of ganglia, what we understand in the nervous system world is that this would represent a cluster of neurons. So now we're having groupings of specific neurons that are in a highly organized, and that's much of what this lecture is all about, the organization of the nervous system. We get more and more complex, thus we get more and more organized for that reason. So annelids and arthropods, these are like earthworms and uh, all insects, are going to have a cluster of neurons in a highly organized, repeated pattern. And this will include a central control organ. But in addition to that, the neurons that make up that central control organ will be highly organized um, in a repeated pattern. And we'll see this 
theme sort of pop up again as we continue um, and complete our look at the nervous system types in the next video. So that covers our first look at the different types of nervous systems. Notice how we're getting more and more complex. Take a look at this figure to see a visual representation of these different nervous systems thus far.